Today on Premiere Prep, we continue our beginner's guide using Blender for visual effects. For part two, we do masking and rotoscoping. Hello Film Worlders, it's me, your host, Micah Pendleton, and welcome to Premiere Prep. Thank you very much for tuning in to part two in our beginner's guide to using Blender for visual effects compositing. If you haven't seen part one, you can click up here to watch it. Your guys' response has been absolutely fantastic, and I would just like to say thank you. So let's get into today's episode, masking and rotoscoping. Before you can start masking and rotoscoping, or roto for short, you need to understand what each of these are. Masking is the process of tracing around an object and or area to create a mat, which will then be used to define what parts of an effect and object can and cannot be visible. Roto is animated masking, which will then be used for any moving object, camera movement, or obstruction between the subject and camera. For our example, I'll be doing a screen replacement on my computer monitor. As you can see, the chair starts to obstruct the screen a little bit. If we were to just add the screen on top of this, part of the chair would be cut off. That's where Roto comes in. We can rotoscope around the chair and cut it out, then reapply it over the screen. Enough talk, let's jump into Blender. The example I'm showing here is all tracked and ready for rotoscoping. I'm not going to show how to do all the tracking because that is a future episode and this additional compositing was last episode, which you can watch here. All I have done is set up the footage, tracked the monitor, and added the screen to the monitor. It's not super refined, because this is just for example. Now as you can see, when the chair starts to pass in front of the monitor, the screen I added gets obstructed. To fix this, we're going to mask around the chair. To get to the mask editor, go to the editor type menu and select UV image editor. Change the editor mode to mask. Add a new mask, then a new mask layer. To add a new mask point, simply hold down Control, Command on Mac, and right click to add a point. Mask around the object in a counterclockwise direction so that we can add a feather later. If you mask in a clockwise direction, your feather will go inward. For this shot, I need the feather to go outward. And once you get all the way back around to the first point, you'll press Alt-C to close the mask. And here is where we start to rotoscope. Down on your timeline is a little automatic keyframing button. You will want to select this so that every time you move a point, Blender adds a keyframe. Now with all your mask points selected, press G to grab them and left click just to add a keyframe. Move forward several frames, however many you want, and reposition your mask. Cycle back through the frames between your two keyframes, and if you see any deviations, go ahead and fix them real quick. Then go forward again and repeat. Now work your way through until you're done. Now you will want to add a feather. To do so, select all of your points and hold down shift and right click and drag on one of your points to add the feather. For this example, I don't want to add too much of one, just enough to smooth the edges. Now we will cut out the chair from our shot and apply it over the added screen. To do so, go to the node editor. Press shift A to open the node menu and under input, select mask. Now add a set alpha node and input your footage and the mask. Now our chair is separated from our shot. Now we want to reapply our chair over the original footage and our screen. Keep in mind as you're doing this, node-based compositing is a linear system like we talked about in part one. So I'm going to go past the place where I added my screen and with an alpha over node, I'll input my chair into the bottom input and my screen added footage into the top input. And there you pretty much have it. You may be saying right now, why not just input the mask into the factor value on the first alpha over node and cut a hole directly into the screen? You could do this, but by cutting out the chair and reapplying it over everything, when you go to add a glow or something of that nature to the monitor, it doesn't bleed onto the chair. And when you want to add like an object in between the chair and the monitor, you can do it just very simply without having to re-input the mask a bunch and it keeps your comp a lot cleaner. 
So that pretty much does it. It's very simple to do and vital when compositing almost anything in Blender. For part three, I'll be showing you how to get started with the motion tracker in Blender. If you haven't seen part one, I highly recommend you go back and watch it by clicking here. All right, I'm your host, Micah Pendleton. Remember, dreaming big is important, but so is paying small. I'll catch you next time.